Hi everyone, my name's Kim, aka Geekerella, and welcome back to the DC's Young Animal Book Club. Today we're going to be reviewing Shade the Changing Girl, issue number six, which the amazing people over at DC have sent me a free copy, and I'm here today to talk about it. So let's get right into it by saying that this was an amazing issue. I mean, it's been great so far, but I think... What happened in this issue is something that everyone has been waiting for for a long time. And that is, of course, the long-awaited confrontation between Megan and Loma in the fight for the corporeal body. So I think from the very beginning of the series, a lot of people were wondering, when were we going to see Megan back and fighting for her life? And this, my friends, is the issue. It got left on a cliffhanger in issue number five. <sighs> and issue number six delivered. But before we go delving through this issue, I do want to talk about a main theme that is ever present in this series. And that is of course the theme of bullying. Bullying takes a major place in this comic because of all the horrible stuff that Megan has done to her friends and family and basically everyone around her. But in terms of Megan's bullying, it seems that a lot of issues seemed actually resolved in this issue. And I'm talking about this especially because of the way that the story played out. At the very beginning of this issue, Shade or Loma was fighting Megan by herself. Megan's ghostly form seemed to pop up in all different places, in public, in private, no matter where, Megan was jumping out and trying to attack Loma and take over her body. And at this stage, nobody could see Megan, it was just Loma, and it seemed like she was completely crazy. It kind of put to rest those rumours about everyone thinking that Megan had brain damage and kind of played into that, so it seemed kind of normal. Well, normal-ish for this new character, Shade. So it wasn't actually until the very end of the issue that Shade actually asked for help from River. That's right, Shade's new friends River and Teacup came to her rescue, running up into her room and could finally see Megan's corporeal form, which they couldn't see before. So we saw all this madness around the room, everyone could see it. We saw Megan's father flying in the air, so much stuff was happening. Teacup could actually communicate with Megan. And of course, this is the first time that she's spoken to her, seen her, since the accident at the river. So Megan, being her usual terrible self, tells Teacup that she's nothing, that she, she can't wait to get back to her body and completely terrorize everyone. Teacup tells her that everyone hates her, no one wants her back, no one misses her. She is basically a blight amongst them. And I feel like this in turn gave Shade enough energy to push Megan away and she finally evaporated. I actually really quite like the metaphor in the ending here, even if it was intentional or not. The fact that Shay was struggling through this whole issue to get rid of Megan and her terrible she's bullying her even from like beyond the grave and the fact that all she had to do was ask for help have some friends back her up and they could completely get rid of the problem I think that of course, as I said, that bullying is a main theme in this book. So bringing forth an issue like that and overcoming it in the way that they did, I think is a really great lesson and something that should inspire people if they are feeling the same way. Well, maybe a little bit different. I'm sure your bully hasn't been taken over by an alien that stole a madness vest and is now a criminal in most of the galaxy. I feel like your circumstances might be a little bit different, but I think you get my drift. I also think this issue was a great building of character for Shade. She had so many motives for not having Megan get back into her body, but that A, yes, yeah, she doesn't want to die, and B, she doesn't want Megan getting back into her body and terrorizing the people that she's actually come to quite like, all of these people around her, and developed some quite strong relationships with. So I think Shade has finally realized that she's trapped on this earth and has these amazing friends that are really going to help her fit into human life. But while this is all happening, meanwhile on Meta, we have the scientists have kidnapped Shade's ex-boyfriend, La Puck, and are basically torturing him for information. And they have unfortunately found Shade's body encased in this cabinet, which they cannot penetrate yet. So I feel like this issue ended on a really good note. It kind of wrapped up all of the Megan storylines, though I'm sure we will see more of her in the future. Also left us on a cliffhanger with what is happening in Meta. So I am so keen to get my hands on the next issue and continue reading this amazing story. So that was my review for Shade the Changing Girl, issue number six for the DC Fans channel. I really hope you enjoyed my video today, guys. And if you're not picking up Shade, you definitely have to. Once again, my name is Kim, aka Geekerella, and I will see you very, very soon. Goodbye.